Good evening and welcome to Smart Entrepreneurship Decoded on Transcontinental Times. We have all seen and gone into almost every aspect of entrepreneurship, every industry, but one eluded us all these months. As India becomes progressively richer, and believe me, we are not, not even halfway there, even compared to Indonesia, where I live now, our per capita income is only about a third. So as India becomes richer and more and more people get pushed into middle and upper class, one sector has boomed almost silently. A highly unorganized sector that was ripe for disruption and it's happening right before our eyes. Maybe a lot of it has already happened. That is the home improvement sector, which is already $23 billion in size and is likely to grow to about $33 billion in the next five years. I'm not talking of real estate. I'm not talking of any the furniture and stuff like that. I'm talking of pure home improvement and interior design. The British gave us a design act in 1911, just about the time the first so-called commission for some designing somebody's house was given to an American woman in the US. 89 years later, the Indian government came out with a revised design act that incorporated interior design. The real action, and for those of us who have suffered through carpenters, plumbers, etc., trying to do it ourselves, know the value of a good interior designer. The real action has started in the last 10 years, especially in the last four or five, as aggregators and real home improvement companies like Home Lane, Live Space, are making a mark for themselves and getting multi-million dollars in funding. Home Lane raised 30 million, Live Space raised money from iCare's investment arm. At the same time, research shows that India lacks about one lakh interior designers. That's the demand over the next three to four years. And colleges, true to our Indian education system, have jumped into the bandwagon and are bandying courses one after the other. I was looking for somebody, what they call a design premier nowadays, and the government has got an incubator for that with a rolling fund of 10 crores to promote design premiers. I was looking for a design premier and I came across one in my own friend circle. She studied entrepreneurship way back in the late 80s when it was not yet fashionable to do so, taught it for short term programs, went on to learn interior design practiced it overseas, came back to India, and now has just written a book for students who want to practice interior design. And the book is called The Design Strategist. Please welcome Bharti Girdar to the show tonight. Hello, Good evening Nagar. and welcome. Hi, hi. So how come you studied entrepreneurship in 1989 when we did not even know the spelling of the word? Uh, some compulsion or no other course left or what was the <laughs> reason for that? actually quite by accident. So it wasn't a uh, compulsion or nothing. It was just by chance that um, in 1989, uh, National Small Industries Corporation had introduced a course in entrepreneurship. So it was the first of its kind and uh, just saw a clipping in the newspaper. And um, since I have my family, uh, the blood of entrepreneurship flowing in my family, I think that must have prompted me. And that's what I did. I went and joined the course. And when did the shift to design happen? I think the shift to design was there um, at the time when I finished my postgrad. I started with a small company then. I used to make accessories for kids. I was just 19 years old and uh, I'd started uh, something at my uh, a small, uh, you know, spare room in the house. So, um, I used to design uh, kids' accessories and clothes at, back at that time. And then slowly and gradually, I came towards interior design. Uh, in my head, I used to uh, plan rooms and uh, started sketching. Uh, then um, I went on to uh, Delhi University to become a lecturer in home science. And I used to teach uh, house plans and all to the, uh, to the students over there. But it was like uh, the bug had bitten me. And, but I did a formal training in interior design much later when I was 32 because I didn't get a chance. I got married and had children, so I didn't get a chance to do it in 
India. So I went abroad and I did it. So, you know, when you see these hundreds of colleges now offering interior design courses in India, and I know you lecture at a few of them. What what is is there a defined way of teaching it? I mean, is it a four year course? Is it a one year course? Everybody seems to have a different parameter. Yeah, even I have uh, learned uh, for the last five years when I've been interacting with the colleges and institutes that there is a diploma and then there's a certificate and uh, there is two years uh, diploma. And there is a three year certificate. So really, uh, <clears throat> there is no set standard for it. Uh, but yes, the interior design education ideally should be imparted as any other education like an architect's course because it is a very detailed layer course. Uh, I feel that uh, it's the system is the the course curriculum is lacking lots of inputs uh, and they should be provided to be uh, to build wholesome interior designers. You know, CII did a study uh, two years ago and they came up with a number that there are really only 3,700 practicing interior designers in India. Leave, leave aside the carpenters who act like one, right? Uh, genuine th genuinely only 3,700 and the country needs about a hundred thousand yeah. with the way and if obviously these 3,700 are not teaching at these colleges. So what is exactly being taught to people who are going to design our homes? Um, see, I can't speak for, for all colleges. I can only speak for the ones that I have interacted in and the students who are learning uh, design over there. When I interact with them, lots of them actually don't even know why they're doing interior designing. So interior designing is the stepchild of the family, basically. For those uh, children who cannot get into engineering or, uh, you know, uh, medicine or any other uh, good course, uh, the parents are now considering, or some of them who cannot get into architecture are now considering sending their children to interior design. That's a sad thing. So uh, when they enter, half of them are not really very clear. They need to be motivated and inspired. They need to be told this uh, this course has a huge potential. And, um, and that is why when they go about this course half-heartedly, half-motivated, they're not confident when they come out of it. So obviously, you will not find these interior designers, uh, you know, uh, very motivated and inspired to begin their journey. And our country will still keep on uh, lacking good interior designers if you don't correct it at the very nascent level. Actually, even in the software space for UI and UX designers, Indians go overseas. Uh, Indian yeah. companies, they don't find adequate number of skilled quality uh, designers in India. But yeah. let's go back to, uh, for a moment to what is being taught and we'll come to entrepreneurship after that. You can, you can teach people uh, project management, you can teach people business skills, soft skills, etc. Can you teach somebody design sense? That's a tricky question. <laughs> I, I have actually seen, let me just put it this way. I have seen more examples of um, <clears throat> designers that were born. They were born designers. They were, had the uh, taste, uh, you know, uh, they had the already good taste uh, imbibed in them. And uh, they grew up probably, uh, you know, it's nature versus nurture also a little bit of that. Um, but they uh, probably grew up with uh, models in their head that they followed and then they developed it. And then there are very few who uh, were very determined that they don't have it in them, but they want to study it, had very uh, consciously inculcated the skills. So there is no right answer for this. I think you will find so is that is that how some of the wives of top Bollywood stars became interior designers overnight by just watching what's around them? Is it that easy? No, <laughs> definitely not. Uh, I really do not know. I have to do a research on how these wives have uh, become interior designers. It's quite demotivating for a student, right? To study all this and realize that somebody can just walk in without a qualification. It is definitely. And uh, uh, actually in our system, uh, you know, there's no certification being practiced so far that for somebody to start practicing as a freelance interior designer, that people are going and checking certificates. So really it's, it's still in a very unorganized form. Yeah, no, but that's good, you know, unorganized and chaos is a ripe and fertile ground for entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So let's come to your book. Is your book about people wanting to be, become de design trainers or is it about people just uh, getting out of college and 
getting a practical guide. Was it, what is it that your book actually addresses that these colleges are not addressing? Um, so it is, to answer your first question, it is mainly for designpreneurs. But I, I very strongly believe that if you can be a designpreneur, you can be very good at your job as well. Because being a designpreneur means that you are a completely rounded personality, that you are able to handle marketing, you're able to handle uh, project implementation, you're able to do good designs as well. So if you can do that, then definitely you can do this. Um, uh, to your second question, what has been the gap? I largely feel that uh, design has been taught very well in colleges, how to do a design for a client, uh, but how to go about implementing the projects, how to find out what ki kind of clients you are dealing with or what kind of projects you're dealing with, what kind of conversations that you should have with the client and what kind of contract should you draw up with a vendor and uh, how should you actually go about executing different kinds of projects. That kind of hands-on knowledge has not been imparted. In fact, it's so, I didn't find any single book on the subject as well. So, so far. your book is a practical fill the gaps kind of thing for people to actually practice on the ground. Yes, yes, yes. So to okay. Say yes. So once people decide to become design trainers, obviously nobody is going to give them a bungalow to do in the first day, right? Because they're no film stars, husband or wife. So uh, and in typically young people tend to think of entrepreneurship as I start, then somebody funds me, then I scale up. For an investor, it is virtually impossible to invest in a business which is dependent on a personal skill, yes. like a chef or a yeah. barber or an interior designer. Yeah. I'm not trying to demean it, but it's yeah. not scalable. One designer cannot be at multiple places. So what's your view on that? How do designers set up a business which is beyond their own individual time? I think you have to take... Um very very small baby steps to begin with you cannot jump into you know getting investments for your company because like you rightly said it's a service-based single person uh, dependent company so you have to take baby steps establish your firm and once you have enough experience doing up projects and you are capable of juggling up multiple projects that's the time that you should form a firm and then you can probably you know bring uh, investors on board so is that a is there a need that you know some these people should partner with people with other skills or uh, are they better off taking a back seat and being a designer in an entrepreneurship setup i mean only equity they can still own equity but do yeah. they really need to be in front because it takes a lot of time it does take a lot of time no uh, this could be an alternate model for some but some who are good at doing it all um, can practice alone if there is nothing that's stopping them but yes you know if they they have a good partner who uh, can fill in their gaps i think then the growth can be faster definitely okay so are you one who has been a theoretician and written this book or do you actually practice interior design no i've been practicing interior design for the last 20 years and um, for the last two years just before pandemic i started mentoring and coaching and that's when uh, you know i actually uh, took this book uh, to seriously and started writing because i met many students uh, who were struggling with these kind of areas so how long did it take you to write this book about three years plus that complicated a subject is it <laughs> no it was uh, th there was nothing to fall back on like uh, i have seen books on interior design which are written by uh, foreign authors a lot of uk based and us based authors but i did not find any uh, much of content on uh, in, the, in indian context so obviously you know finding that validation was not there so it took me so time i to being a practicing designer yourself and you are in a city of bangalore bangalore mumbai Delhi and Pune actually uh, account for 80% of the interior design market of India. For young people who come out, what will be their greatest challenges first day when they're out? <laughs> You'll be surprised to know, but I think the, the greatest challenge is to get started, to just uh, figure out where to find the projects. Um, to uh, I find that most of the students, uh, if you ask them what is their biggest pain point, they, they, they tell 
mean that, you know, what if I get a call from a lead, a potential lead? I really do not know how to answer. I, I do not know how to give ballparks, estimates. I really do not know how do I, what is my work process? So all those thoughts are their blocks and uh, they really do not know how to begin. But, you know, if you speak to customers, uh, I could say from personal experience as well, when you speak to customers, they often feel that designers, instead of simplifying complex situations, tend to make simple situations complex. I don't know. I, I really don't. Uh, I haven't heard anybody say that. Uh, but yes, it could be uh, maybe perceived as, you know, because they're creative people and the creative people do have a chaos up here. They're known to have that. So if you don't organize that chaos in your head, you're going to present it to the client. So maybe uh, that is why that belief is there. So does your book guide people on that as to how to deal with yes. that? Yes, yes. So it is meant for that so as well. Let's talk about the client side a bit. Uh, so you're fresh out of college. You've you know, gain some extra tricks of the trade and fill the gaps of practical knowledge through books like yours. Mm -hmm. You go out into the market and you want to practice your form and style of design. Where do you stop your design thinking and allow the client to dictate, even if it goes against everything you've learned? Well, most of the time you have to do that. Most of the time you have to be very, very client centric. Uh, rather than your own ideas unless and until the client there are some clients who would come to you and say that you know uh, we do not have any design ideas we have not like our mind doesn't work in that direction can you guide us so that's the time that you should practice it but most of the time you should take those clues from the client and let them rule because they have to live in that house so I would say 90% of the time is there a, a growing market in the commercial space as well apart from residential Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, and especially so now, uh, after the pandemic, there are lots of vacant spaces. You know, people are refusing to go back to work. So we have to start reinventing the office space. And uh, lots of companies are already doing that. Uh, I think uh, there is going to be another boom in the commercial industry as well, where uh, interior designing is concerned. So a lot of people who, uh, you know, getting into interior design for the first time, because India has got this huge mass of people coming into the middle and upper class. Mm -hmm. They are naturally hesitant, right? It's their hard-earned money and they tend to think that it will increase their cost in some way. Uh, there are already transparency issues, material issues, etc., which they are scarred by, not because of the designer, but yeah. because of carpenters, plumbers, or whatever you say. Yeah. yeah. How does a designer overcome that price barrier thinking and transparency thinking? See, there is a very natural graph uh, uh, that an interior designer uh, has to follow. Uh, as a beginner, you have to be 100% transparent. And why I say that is because when you start as a beginner, your elements of designs are mostly well-defined and you must give that cost to the client so that the client is able to trust you. So you, sh you have to put it out there in a very organized form and give each line item. And as you grow and you start to do more layered design, that is the time when you want to take a little bit of more freedom, you know, creative freedom by asking it from the client. And at that point, you can go for more lump sum cost. But to begin with, I think you have to give a complete transparency and let the industry, uh, let your clients form that trust on you. It is extremely important. Let's move to some of the new age uh, design companies, right? We have now MS Dhoni pitching for one of them as well. Uh, I'm sure they're doing good because unlike other startups, they are actually getting into a path yeah. of profitability and good profitability. Yeah. yeah. So from that perspective, it's fine. But from a customer's perspective, uh, what has changed? But particularly what I want to know is when you try to take a creative process and say, I'm going to do it in two weeks or three weeks or whatever, whatever it is. Are you commoditizing design? Are you removing the element of, you know, the individuality or sheer skill and just commoditizing it? Are people now getting boxed solutions? Uh, I wouldn't be so harsh in judging that because uh, I think the very fact that they are being successful, they are definitely catering to a very critical need of the clients. And as long as the clients are happy and their needs are met, we are nobody to say anything. 
but from a designer's perspective i feel like they're the fast food of interior design you know it's a fast food chains of interior design so um according to me if you ask me uh, i like to brew my design over a time period of say uh, you know five or six meetings with a client i i try to get a usp what what they really like uh, but if the client is okay with this i think uh, you get what you pay for they're getting their value so be it we have you, uh, we have enough space in the industry for everyone i'm to sure sure it's so, quite a large market and yeah. growing really fast so yes. would you suggest to you know young design professionals who come out of college to work in these companies or to work with individual designers as an apprentice well depends on what they're looking for if they're looking for monetizing whatever that they have studied and that's the criteria then yes definitely but if they are uh, learning uh, if they want to learn more and they want to be a hardcore interior designer then definitely it's better to get associated with either a mentor or somebody who's more experienced in the field and um, preferably join a startup you know a freelancer so that they can get the maximum exposure and when these uh, entrepreneurs and i i see a lot of design entrepreneurs coming in and trying to solve this disorganized market yes with these newer companies coming in do you see a change in the supply chain or more predictability in materials etc because that has always been the pain right yeah that's always been the pain and i think lot of things are getting sorted uh, the technology is helping us there are so many apps that people uh, like people in designers like us uh, can turn to for sourcing their materials or for getting things done much easier and quicker so i i think that all is enabling it so for, for many of us who travel overseas one of the common uh, things you hear from people is everything there overseas in the developed countries at least is so well finished yeah and uh, sometimes in india you can spend an enormous amount and still be left half pregnant still expectations are not met is it a function of skill work culture or just plain lethargy <laughs> leaving the third point the first two are what it is i think it's not lethargy but it is the work culture it's the, like we have for many many years we have depended upon the carpenters and the unpredictability and the unorganized force yet you know uh, we've been we've managed not so bad uh, but yes the quality had been a very uh, kind of you know you uncertain factor you don't know when you begin a work with a carpenter we're going to get it or not it is also availability of technology and to uh, it, it is taking us time first to have a mindset that yes interior designing is required and once that is then we can have more players in the market who are ready to put money in this market to develop the technology to take us you know to develop some machines so that we can have quality finishes in our furniture so one of the challenges you know uh, in personal skill based businesses for design trainers they will face the same challenge yeah. unless they work for a large organization if they set up their own practice it's largely a small geography that they can serve it's difficult to scale outside of your geography one mm. and secondly it's a business that you can't sell to anybody right don't because it is because of you so either you have children who take it over as a legacy like lawyers child accountants film line uh, i could say the same or politicians also but what is the exit for an entrepreneur how do they get off the treadmill you can't sell it to somebody i mean is it really worth all the effort to build something in a small geography uh, satisfaction is one thing but from business mm -hmm. pure commercial perspective to build something in a small geography can't scale up and nobody to sell to unless your children want to take it over well it's the same with the you know bollywood actors and cricketers as well isn't it anything that has got a brand associated with your name is going to have the same uh, consequence so um but i think nowadays people are thinking more about uh, you know having their life well lived and having to satisfy their own quenches like designers do have um i i don't think our generation is looking at our children <clears throat> taking the legacy forward the new generation doesn't much believe in that um i personally don't see this as a problem i think uh, if you've lived it well and you have lived it all it's perfect let's talk about you the entrepreneur itself so this book is part of your entrepreneurship right 
Yes. Uh, obviously, you've done a great job to uh, give a practical guide to Indian students from an Indian perspective. There are a lot of foreign books, but from an Indian perspective, and our Indian situation is very, very unique for anybody who's lived here. Yeah, definitely. How do you market such a niche book? Mm, well, that's a challenge. Uh, so the challenge is to reach. The, 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 the challenge is to connect. So right now I have just released the book. I've just pre-launched it and I'm in the process. Could you ask that question? I'm in the process of reaching out to various colleges and in, uh, uh, institutions uh, to whom I can uh, send a copy and tell them, yes, please read it. Give it a good read, review it. And that's where it begins. And then um, the other uh, thing that I would really, really want is that if uh, this book can be like an elective subject, because uh, it has got all the things that a business of interior design subject should carry. And uh, if that happens and I can convince on them, then it's no going back. But uh, let's hope it happens. <laughs> no, I wish you the very best for that. But uh, getting back to you know the whole uh, entrepreneurship thing on uh, interior design, uh, do you think every design institute in India should also have incubators where they encourage them to practice it before they go out in the market? Because I don't see, except the National Institute of Design running an incubator, I don't see any incubator. Absolutely. I think, uh, uh, in fact, if they can have a setup where they can invite carpenters, they can invite vendors, they can they can have clients interaction, you know, really coming in there and giving them a first hand experience on how it is that they develop a project from design to execution, you know, going through the whole life cycle of a project. That's that will be great. That will be ultimate. So I strongly recommend, yes, of course, they should have an incubator, like any other uh, hands-on subject that the students are taught. So uh, design like uh, food and fashion changes quite often, right? Do yeah. you uh, find it difficult to keep up at the, with the pace that things change nowadays and the, the variety of materials that are available and the choices available? Uh, yes and no. I think they are uh, very dynamic, like you said, uh, but because of the availability of information, you know, it's everything is within our reach. It's all on our mobile phones. It's become easier and, um, and not so not so much. I think if you if, if you if you are somebody who likes to read and who is uh, naturally inspired to keep on gaining knowledge in this field, it's not difficult at all. What are the three skills that designers should be taught? before they leave college to be design entrepreneurs on their own? Three key skills other than designing itself. Mm. Okay. I think uh, number one is their, uh, their keenness to know themselves. Uh, they should know why they are in this field. So the skill to be able to, um, like uh, what I call is as a SWOT, you know, you should be able to do your SWOT analysis and know what exactly who you are. The second skill I would say is the confidence to face the world because it's not an easy world. It's not an easy ride. It's bumpy. You need to have the confidence. And the third, if it has to be, then it has to be, uh, you need to be a juggler. You need to be able to juggle up many things as an entrepreneur. So yeah, I think these three skills. So Bharti, we are completely out of time. One final question. Sure. Apart from interior design and being a serious practitioner, what else do you do? Anything else that <laughs> helps you relax or anything that you do as a hobby? Lots of things. I write. I do read a lot. And um, I like to do any kind of craft, uh, crafts, basically. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I listen to music. There are lots of hobbies to go back to whenever I'm tired. <laughs> Okay, you definitely helped my knowledge on this subject a lot. It's not something that I was very aware of. But when I saw the sheer scale of the market and the pace at which it is growing and yeah. the shortage, it is yeah. going to be one of the careers of the future. And yes. books like yours will definitely bridge the gap between theory and actual practice. So Thank I wish you. you the very best. I wish you the very best for your book. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you very much Thank for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.